thanks, Cecile. Thanks, Kevin, um, for the opportunity. Uh, I think some of you may have been uh, actually a good portion of you probably were here in January when I presented the initial uh, collaborative business planning overview. Um, and uh, one of the, uh, I'll say it, the silver linings in our, what I've been calling the COVID hiatus, uh, at least for, for us consultants, uh, is that it's provided us some time to now incorporate some of the things that we conceptualized back in January into our CBP solution. So um, CBP is, is, is really a purpose-built custom solution on top of Qualiware, i.e. powered by Qualiware. Uh, Bob Bouvier, who's online there too, is uh, instrumental in, in the development of this product using CaseMaker and uh, QCL custom code. So we have our own unique meta model uh, that takes advantage of some good Qualiware functionality to provide business users with a tool to understand and more importantly optimize their business processes both in terms of resource requirements and also in terms of costs and or profitability depending on uh, if you're a private or public sector focus so so i thought what we do is I'll, I'll walk you through very quickly some conceptual slides to talk how we're integrating lean in with uh, with this and then i'll spend more time on a on a demo uh, actually michael seeger and i i worked over last week or so to put together a call center demo uh, to illustrate some of some of the points that he talked about we thought we'd kind of keep it keep this theme for uh, for the day so uh conceptually what is lean um i'm sure i know lean is is, is widely practiced across the government of canada now um there's been certainly lots of training lots of kaizens lots of uh, efforts around process and to improvement but really what it is it's all about focusing on the customer and saying, you know, what is that customer really interested in uh, the service that we're providing? So it's all about value creation. And it's also about identifying unnecessary steps and reducing waste to kind of improve the end-to-end -end performance of the organization. So some of you may be familiar with the classic uh, uh, iron triangle, some will call it, uh, i.e. cost, time, quality, capacity, you know, give me any two. Uh, what lean really does is allows you to reduce cost, improve throughput time and lead time, and improve quality and capacity of the organization. So it changes your perspective on that, that whole uh, triple constraint uh, thinking. So here's an example. Uh, one of the tools that are, is in the Lean Toolkit is called Value Stream Mapping. Um, so this was based on some work we did at Health Canada a number of years ago now, not, not actually implementing ABP or CBP, but actually working on efficiency indicators with them. But they had a service standard around how they would provide an inspection report when a client called and sort of said, hey, we need, we need to get this product certified or this facility certified. Uh, around the regulations and compliance. So the key activities, they would go out and do a site visit, they would then handle queries back and forth with the client, and they would ultimately produce a report. So very, very simple flow diagram here. So from a lean perspective, when you're doing value stream mapping, you're looking at the total service time. So that's really, the service standard is 30 days to process that from the time of the call to the time the report is, is delivered. And that's broken into a variety of time. So we call the elapsed time. So how long does it take kind of clock time for that site visit to be scheduled and executed? How long does it take to uh, set up the meetings and have the, the query, the meeting, and the calls? And how long does it take to you know, do the reports from the time you start it to the time you finish it? So those are what we call elapsed time. There's also then the processing time. So that's really the hands-on time. That's the the resource requirement for that particular. So it's it's typically less than the elapsed time. So a query may only, a meeting for handling these queries may only take three hours, but scheduling it and, and getting it coordinated and so on may take overall two days and so on. So we talk about that as the processing time. And then typically the real killer in most business processes is the wait time. That's the time where the ball gets passed from typically one functional group to another and before it's picked up. So what goes out of your outbox and what comes into your inbox? So this, this wait time. 
So if you look at the total here uh, of wait time plus elapsed time, basically 34 days. So obviously they're not meeting their, their, their service standard. So understanding from a lean perspective what's happening uh, and then optimizing that is, is absolutely key. So there's some parameters that uh, lean practitioners will develop. One is called the value added ratio. So it's really the ratio of processing time, which is absolutely the, the minimum requirement of time to do the work divided by the total lead time, that for 34 days. So in this case, it's about 9%. Actually, to be honest, that's not bad. Uh, seems very low, uh, but uh, 10 to 20% is considered you know uh better performance really very very rarely will you see organizations about 30 or 40 percent so those are some of the parameters around lean what do we do with uh activity-based planning which is what cbp was originally built on um that methodology i i i couldn't help a, a chuckle michael was talking about closing the loop and we actually follow a methodology called the closed loop uh, for implementing activity-based planning. So what it does is basically says, yes, you've got a business process, but what drives that business process? What customer demands do you have? In this case, inspections, and they also do assessments. So both of those two demands or outputs drive the requirements for these activities. And those activities need to be done by uh, people and facilities and equipment, so those are the resources. So we actually build a process model, process map, that flows from the bottom to the, the top in regards to the uh, requirements for resources to meet actually outputs or demands. And that model, then we load in data, operational and financial data to actually do some calculation. And that's where the, the intelligence comes within the CBP application is the math that's done. It's not a traditional application of Qualiware. Uh, so we have to do some, some custom work around that. So operational information would be your volumes. So if we know what our volumes of inspections and assessments are, and then if we know things like our consumption rate, so on average, how many site visits are done per inspection? Let's say that takes, on average, you have to go out and do it twice. So if we had 10 inspections, we'd have to do 20 site visits to support the inspection demand. And then if we knew, on average, how much time a site visit takes, let's say that's 40 hours, then 40 times 20 is 80 hours. So we would need 80 hours of field team to do just this part of the process, the business process. And then if we move that all up and we bring up the volumes and all the uh, consumption rates, we can actually compare those against the capacity. So what are the constraints in our business process that would limit us in the amount of work, i.e. activities, or more appropriately, the amount of output that we can deliver. So we put those into the model. So typically, there's only so many hours in the day for people. There's only so many pieces of equipment available. There's only so much space in our facility. And we, we test the model against those constraints. So then we, assuming we can actually physically do this, we can then look at our financials. So we map the financial, your expense statements into the resource structure. That's really what the resources are. You pay for your resources. You pay for your people, depreciation on equipment, uh, lease, you know, utilities, whatever on buildings. You pay for maybe external contractors, and then you pull those dollars back down through the model. So we can get at things like the activity cost the demand or uh, output cost, and even the customer cost. So our customers typically would take a variety of uh, requirements or demands from our organization. And if you're in a, uh, either in a cost recovery mode where you're charging for some of those services, or if you're in the private sector and you're, you're uh, you know, uh, putting, a, putting a revenue stream on that, you can actually determine what the profitability is on a, on a customer or product service basis. So again, I know that's a bit of a rehash for some of you, but it's kind of important to understand the kind of two paths, operational calculation, comparison to capacity, determine utilization, and then pulling those dollars back down through the model through the operational understanding that the first pass is done. That's why we call it the closed loop. It, it kind of uh, up, and, up and down to close that loop. 
So with lean, what we do is lean practitioners will do a great job at mapping this all out with their value stream maps. And now what we can do with, a, with CBP is we can do that same visualization. We can load that uh, with regard to our resource requirements to do those activities and get at the capacity to serve. And then because we can handle the financials as well, we can actually get at the cost to serve. So this addresses a, a, a really a, a big gap in most lean implementations in that lean is great for identifying process improvement ideas, uh, and, but it's not so good. There's not uh, very many tools that allow uh, a lean practitioner or lean team to understand the resource impact of those changes. Uh, or even more appropriately, the cost impact of those changes. So that's what, what CBP brings to the equation, allows you to do your value stream map, marry that with what we call our activity-based planning uh, uh, maps, and uh, allow you to do scenario planning into the future. So, okay. Let, Mike, enough. my experience in talking with some lean practitioners is that they actually don't have a lot of tools to support that kind of work. You know, it's a lot of uh, drawing on boards and sticky uh, sticky notes. So something like this puts a lot of structure around it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, even even in the value stream mapping, and I, we work with a variety of partners, lean lean implementers. Um, and you know, the, the the best tech that I I've seen is is somebody that's you know skilled in Visio. Uh, and it is uh, this this timeline here that you see. That's an important thing for an understanding point of view. So you can appreciate drawing that out in in Visio. The the challenges you'll have in in, in and even even in Qualiware. I mean, uh, in being able to collect information out of an object and put it appropriately in the timeline. So we'll show you what we've done with CBP to uh, to uh, streamline that. So okay. So let me uh, let me get out of there. Let's go into this model. Um, so again, just a, a little, you'll, you'll recognize the QLM interface, uh, and I'll just explain a few things here for the uh, Qualiware at heart. Uh, so we have all of our different symbols. So these would be all the objects that we would associate with any, any diagram. And we have two types of diagrams. So if we go over, let me just show you the repository explorer. So these are all the, all the, 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 the uh, components that, that sit, and we have value stream diagram, and we have an ABP diagram. So right now we're looking at the ABP diagram. So let me take you through what this is all about. So we've, we've only dealing as an inbound call center. So let's say this is the uh, CRA one that, uh, that uh, Mike, uh, Michael walked us through. Um, and we look at how many calls per day. Uh, so we can say everywhere you see these little green Vs, those are variables. So we can use those in calculated formulas around consumption rates, uh, around volumes, around financials and whatever, and it provides flexibility in our model that those are the basically the levers now that we can readily give to a business user so they can do scenario planning. I'll talk a little bit about methodology after we finish the demo here if we have, uh, if we have time. Um, so calls per day, 5,000 calls per day, this is a monthly model. So up here, I've got some global variables. So I've got the number of business days per month. So this is going to be a 20 business day month. So 20 times 5,000 is the 100,000 calls that need to be handled. Now, one of the interesting things that we've done in this model is, and, and Michael talked about this with that CRA example, the number of drop calls or block calls. And so we said 20% of those are dropped. So 20,000 of the, of the 100,000 calls are dropped, but we know that has an impact on customer satisfaction. In fact, we can actually, someone can actually develop a kind of a KPI or a, a factor to actually say, we know that every 25 drop calls that our overall customer satisfaction is going to drop by 1%. So we can actually simulate a performance metric in our model as well. So as, and I'll show you this later when we run a scenario, as we draw, or lower the number of drop calls, our customer satisfaction will go, will go up. Right now we're at 60% satisfaction. Not great, obviously there's some, some, some improvements. So let's look at the business process. So what happens with the call? So the ones that aren't dropped come into the tier one agent. So the tier one agent will handle that call 
So that's really the connection here. And it takes them on average five minutes to handle a first, first response call. Um, there is first call res resolution. Um, so 70% of the time, uh, the agent can handle that call properly. However, 30% of the time, so 30% of 80,000 is 24,000 calls that have to get pushed up to the tier two agent for a more detailed explanation and so on. So what we're seeing here is, is kind of an efficiency factor of how well the tier one call is, is working. Um, I've also got some training that's taking place over here. So Michael and I actually worked to build this model. One of the, one of the reasons was to you know, keep the theme here today for call centers, but also to show the value of having better training and, uh, and, and its impact on the organization to understand what the cost benefit could be of implementing something like Interact Coach or better training methodologies and better tools within a call center. So we're gonna come back and play uh, with, with that. Uh, that training, just so you see, there are some variables here. So we said, basically every, every week they will run a training session. So in a course of a 20 day month, we would run four sessions. And typically about 25% of the tier one agents will attend a session and that will be a full day session, seven hours. Okay, so seven hours is actually the same amount of practical time that an agent is available for work. So that would be maybe paid eight hours, but net out lunches, net out breaks and so on. So that's the practical time an agent is available. So the agent itself uh, basically is comprised of, you can work some overtime, so we can simulate overtime expenses at, at a higher cost, at a higher unit cost, of course. Um, and the actual uh, fixed resource. So we have symbology here. So these home plates represent fixed resources. That means their costs do not change over the time period of the model. And then we have a variety of variable resources. So overtime is a, is a demand driven thing. So we can turn that on and off, we pay on an hourly basis. I've also got some other uh, call center related uh, variable expenses. So the number of SIP channels. So that's like your, your sort of like your telecom trunks. How many, how many of these SIP channels uh, can, do we need to support the number of calls? We've got uh, cloud uh, telephony now that's, that's available from a variety of vendors. So instead of uh, companies buying or organizations buying their own OV, AVR or automatic call distribution, basically they can buy a package and pay on a per user basis for that particular service. So we've kind of outsourced the uh, telephony uh, component for this call center. Um, so continuing up here, we've got tier two calls. So that's the result of not you know, these calls being transferred. So there is some transfer time. So you, 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 everybody can identify with this. This is kind of interesting about call centers. So you know when you say, okay, yeah, I need to get to the next level here, uh, but the, the guy that you spoke to has to do the introduction and then the other person comes on the line. So there's some time taken for that tier one agent to do the transfer to tier two. And then the tier two agent gets involved and because this has already been escalated, maybe the supervisor has to be called in. So we can actually simulate that. So we say, okay, well, these types of calls, once they've been escalated, maybe 10 minutes, and that would be uh, for both the supervisor and the, and the uh, T2 agent, um, and, but only 20% of the time does that supervisor get involved. So we can actually flex that based on the quality of the tier to agent based on the knowledge that they have that you know, regarding the pass of that that call so we can flex that as well and then the tier two agent basically is involved in that but they also have callbacks so at some point they say hey i got to go do some research so similar to what mike walked us through with the cra example uh, when he was the mystery caller uh, and we use these uh, these purple symbols here are actually what we call connectors so I've got callback that actually connects back down here. So it just allows me to move things appropriately and avoid kind of a spaghetti network on the, on the, uh, on the diagram itself. So I've got what uh, would be called complete and accurate. Percent complete and accurate is a lean terminology to designate how, uh, how well you do any 
activity the first time. So we're saying complete and accurate is 90%, which means that incomplete and not accurate is 10%. So 10% of all these tier two calls actually wind up as being a callback. And even they aren't quite correct sometimes. 90% of them actually uh, generate a second callback that we find out more information in the first call and we have to call again. And that callback time is about 10 minutes. So we have our two agents, tier one, tier two agents, probably paid at different rates, of course. We have our supervisors that oversee and, and, and you know, supervise these people as well as get involved in tier two calls. We have a facility that they all sit in and this could be a lease facility. So we've very, you know, kind of rudimentary model. We've covered a lot of ground with what a, what a call center would have. And, and of course this could be expanded. We just wanted to keep this for illustration purposes. So all of this information now we can bring into a value stream map. So here's kind of the simplest component is we do tier one calls. They take five minutes. We have a queue time of two minutes. So I just use that stuff that uh, Mike mentioned with CRA, the two minute standard. So our lead time, total lead time is seven minutes, five plus two, and our complete and accurate is 70%. That's the first call resolution. Then at two minutes to pass it over to tier two call, we know that is 10 minutes. So the lead time and processing time is the same, but we know we have a complete and accurate of 90%. So these are, these are, this is data that's shared between the ABP diagram and the VSM value stream map diagram. Callbacks, okay, two hours to go do the research and then we get a callback, 10 minutes. Uh, that's done correctly 90% of the time. And then obviously more detailed research, four hours to do that and get a second callback. So this is kind of a classic value stream map. And now we've built some smarts in here. So when I calculate this model, it automatically and dynamically draws the uh, timeline and gives me some of the, the lean parameters. So I know that total lead time is about six and a half hours. I know that my total processing time is only 35 minutes. So that's all the touch time. If a client got down, not every client obviously is gonna to get to the, 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 the full meal deal here, which is probably a good thing, uh, but the maximum time any client would be involved would be 35 minutes. So really the value added ratio, you remember that ratio is about 9%. And our roll through yield, another, another um, lean term is the, the, the percentage of, of, of it being done correctly throughout the whole process. So we have 70% times 90% times 90%, and that's where that 57% is coming from. So that, that's a, an efficiency, sort of an efficiency factor. So those are numbers you're wanting to obviously improve as you make lean improvements. Any questions on that? I'll just take a breath here. So the real value of the tool though becomes when it does its scenario planning. So methodology wise, we build the model, sort of let's Michael describe the as is model and we validate that against known time periods, both for the financials and for the, uh, the operational flows. And then we can do some scenarios. So if we look at our total cost here, we've got about $500,000 in monthly cost, all right? And if we looked at our unit cost, so the, the only demand we have, it's about $5 per, call. Uh, that's what the uh, unit cost would be. And those costs are coming from our call center facility. So we have lease, insurance, utilities costs. I've got, you know, my, my, my annual costs here. I can see what those are. I can go down and let's look at my tier one agents. So here's my salaries and my benefits associated with those. One of the cool things that we have with CBP is the ability to understand all the inflows and outflows. So this is actually now showing me the uh, where the flows are coming in, what the resultant costs are and where they're going to. Um, so if I look at, I can also look at this on an account by account basis, because not only is it taking the total costs and moving those down through the model, it's taking all of the delineated costs at the chart of accounts level. So I can rebuild kind of an expense statement at any one of my activities and I can see how, the, how those costs flow into that particular activity. So my total cost here is $500,000. Let's say the uh, business says, okay, uh, let's say this was, let's, let's make it COVID related. So what happened 
at Service Canada and at CRA when they introduced the, the CERB. Uh, I'm sure calls went through the roof. So how would they plan and model that? So let's, let's make it a little bit more modest. Like let's take a 20% increase in calls. So if I increase this by from 5,000 to 6,000, what's the impact of that going to be? Okay, so I recalculate my model and it tells me, ah, you don't have some resource, enough resource somewhere. So it's really happening in my tier two agents. Okay, so I'm at 109%. I should point out the other utilization. Typically a call center, you will probably want to run in the 80 to 85% utilization that provides enough of a buffer for handling peak volumes and so on. So we can see that we've broken a constraint here. So all of our financial information disappears. That's very important. We can only be misled by erroneous financial information. And we can see that some of these have also turned from green to yellow, indicating we can set traffic lights to alert us that we're getting into a, a near overcapacity situation, which is what's happening for, for tier one agents as well. So we could take a, a brute force approach to this. We can say, well, let's just hire more people. So we could actually say, okay, well, let's, let's run that as a, as a scenario. So I'm going to take uh, my agents I'm going to hire, let's say I'm going to hire 45 new agents or uh, 10 new agents. So I'm going to go from 35 to 45. So I could rerun my model and yeah, lo and behold, I've uh, no, no broken constraints. So I could actually cost that out. So if I recalc the financials, so I've added about $50,000 worth of cost to um, that, that, uh, that uh, total uh, monthly operation. However, I know that this is a little too high. So I probably want to add, the same thing with supervisors, I probably want to add some more people there. So if I take this to get it at, let's say I'm gonna add 50, 15 more tier one agents, and let's say I'm gonna add a couple more supervisors because now I've got uh, more people to manage, and I recalculate that model, that says, uh oh, got another problem. Okay, so not, well, first of all, I made it wrong. <laughs> I should make 12 instead of two. So let's do that, recalculate the model. And I can see now I've got a problem. I don't have enough space in my facility to house those additional 10 plus 15, 20, 27 people. So I might now have to say, okay, well, I've got to expand my facility. So I can go to, let's simulate that and say, I'm going to increase my capacity by 20%. So I'm going to take it from 4,200 square feet up to 5,000 square feet. That doesn't come for free. I'm going to have to actually increase my lease cost, which is 300,000 a year, up to 360,000. And now I can actually run that as a, a new scenario to see what the impact is going to be. So, okay, so that's fine. So now I've, I've got my utilizations back to what I would expect to be normal operating levels. And my facilities, you know, okay, it's, it's getting a bit tight, but I can handle a little bit more from a personnel point of view. But now my costs are up to $615,000. And look here, my satisfaction level has dropped dramatically because I'm still dropping those 20, 20, 20% uh, 20 of my calls. So I could try a different scenario. A better scenario might be not to, uh, not to just add people, but to apply some better training. So if I look at my training and let's say I, I bring Michael and his team in and we put in interact coach and we improve the efficiency of the training. So A, we don't need as many agents on these regularly scheduled sessions. So I'm gonna take that from let's say 25 to 10% of the agents have to do. And that time will be, be, it's more focused. So let's instead of seven hours, let's make that three hours and see what the impact is. So if I watch my utilization 81% here, and now it goes down to seven. So I've freed up capacity, but that training and the tools that we would put in place by using, uh, say, Interact Coach, that's gonna have an impact on first call resolution as well. So now I'm gonna handle more on first call. So if I go from, let's say, 70 to 80% first call resolution, that's gonna make a change. And I can also find out that the, the calls that are coming, they're better informed. So uh, with the amount of time, let's say the supervisors or the tier one, um, tier two 
agents are spending might be reduced. So I mean, maybe that only goes from 10 to five minutes calls now because a lot of the, the tough ones have been handled by the tier one agent and maybe supervisors only get involved 10% of the time. So if I rerun all of that as a scenario, and this is one of the you know in, interesting things with having these ABP models is your ability to kind of, you know, scenario play at the, the speed of thought. Um, so we can recalculate these models. And now I can see, okay, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've been able to handle that. In fact, now I've got too much capacity and my utilization's here at 31. So I don't want, I don't need that many, many people. I can probably reduce that to uh, let's say 20. And so I'm gonna see some, some impact on that. I can recalculate that model. I've got the same issue here with my, my supervisors. I probably don't need that many supervisors. So I could take that down. Let's say I take that down to six because I don't have as many people I need to supervise. Plus they're not as engaged in those tier one calls. And I recalculate my model and I can see, okay, yeah, now I've, I'm actually lower in cost because I've you know, done better training uh, and my unit cost now has gone from $5 down to $4. Now that would have an impact, obviously, if you're in private sector and you were you know, charging a fee or whatever, you would actually see profitability on this as well. So, and then we can actually see what the impact is on the value stream because all of this information now gets pulled over and you could actually then assume, oh, well, you know, the research, we don't have to do as much. So if I take that down from two hours to let's say one hour because now we have extra capacity as well in the tier two agents. And I can take, let's say instead of four hours, now the second callback is only two hours. I could actually see what would the impact be. So I've seen I've increased my value added ratio from nine to 14% and my throughout growth of yield is, is increased as well. So we've been able to kind of illustrate those two, uh, two key concepts and how we integrate that together. So. Anyways, pretty pretty uh, pretty fast demo. Uh, I know there's a lot of content there, but just want to show you the flexibility of building these uh, process models and and being able to do the scenario playing, and and really enabling business users to uh, kind of simulate what their business processes are and how they can improve those using lean concepts and using general, you know, activity-based planning concepts as well. So. Just gonna quickly jump back. I know we're running short on time here. So let me just quickly jump back to um, the presentation. Um, and I'm just going to, I just I'll blow this out because I wanna show methodology wise. So there is a, an eight step methodology that we typically implement in doing activity-based planning models. Those overlap very nicely with the, the classic DMAIC process, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So we, we have the methodology to go through and build those models out to get you to this point where you can optimize and plan for the future around your business process and so on. So really Lean and AVP are, are certainly powerful tools in their own right. Lean for identifying waste and reducing lead times and, and, and building this, this culture of, of change and process improvement. ABP on understanding and building consensus on operational financial flows being able to conduct what is, but the real value comes when you tie those together to visualize the impact of those improvements and to understand its, its impact on cost and budget. So. so I shall stop there. I won't go through that last slide, but uh, I, I suspect we'll, we'll probably make these slides available to people, Cecile. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Wow. Any, wow. any questions? Certainly something for the Phoenix people to look at. <laughs> we really need that name. <laughs> You're really trying to bring that up today, aren't you, Kevin? <laughs> Mike, that was an amazing uh, demo. I really love what you did with that, like the, uh, the what-if analysis and scenarios. I think that's amazing. Um, so this is proprietary to your company, I guess. When you Let's say I wanted to hire you. Um, you would come in and bring your own code or your own uh, your own customization to make this happen. Is that yeah, how, it's it's we've productized this now. So CVP is available on the Salsa uh, under vendor close reaches Salsa with the government of Canada. So you can buy that on the Salsa. Okay. Um, and as an add-on, you have to have you know Qualaware obviously as the platform. 
So mm -hmm. if you're already licensed for that, you don't have to uh, invest in that and you can you know, plug CBP on top. So um, is this only for service desks or could it also be no. used for IT plan? No, for everything. No, no. anything, okay. any business anything. process. Us. Yeah, it's, we just yeah. we just did this this yeah we just did the call center example to kind of keep the theme for the day yeah. as it were. But Mike, no, you no. did it for uh, lending for Nova Scotia, right? Yep, we've done some work with the Nova Scotia government. We've done some work for uh, Marine Atlantic uh, in running the ferry operations back and forth to Newfoundland. We're working now with a company called Eden Valley Poultry, who are the largest chicken uh, processing facility in Atlantic Canada. Supply all the KFCs. Anytime you're eating KFC in Ontario, you're you're eating Nova Scotia chicken. Just wanted to pass that along. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Mike, or actually my question is more to Cecile. If I wanted to show this to any of our managers to, to show the capability of the tool, because I think that's lacking a lot. Um, mm -hmm. It, I could could I send them a, a link to the video today? Is that uh, available for you? People? Absolutely can send them a link to the video. We will be we'll be processing and uploading the recording to our YouTube channel. But you all, Mike is also available to provide live demonstrations as well. So you can certainly um, you know we can set something like that up as well. If you want to do a little teaser with the video initially and then arrange for Mike to have a discussion with them, we could certainly do that as well. Okay, yeah, thank you Carol, very much. Carol, Carol, we have yeah, there's there, a variety there are, there are of also, demos that we have too. So we could we could actually, you know, have you pick you know the right one. If if call center is a little too too far from your uh their, your 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 manager's comfort base, we've got a variety of other demos that we could uh, potentially substitute. All right. So the other thing is there are already a couple of other presentations that's Mike that Mike has given on our YouTube channel. So there's a couple of places to start, you know, a couple of things to look at there as well. Um, Close Reach and uh, Landmark are, have a training program. So we have, uh, Mike, maybe you want to talk about what's coming up. Yep. Yeah. So we have uh, a, well, we have actually, <laughs> It's a bit short on time. We have a lean ABP workshop we're doing in concert with Barrington uh, Consulting here in Halifax. So we're doing that online tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, so that goes through the fundamentals of, of lean. It gives you a white belt certification and so on. So probably too, a little, little too close to the action right now, but we do have a CBP uh, two day workshop that we're running with close reach on November 23rd to 26th. So we're running that in the mornings uh instead of two full days in, online we we thought we'd break it into four morning sessions gives you some time in the afternoon to <laughs> decompress from training get some work done and uh so that's available on the close reach site you can see that there in the description and the it, just like point. any other kind of qualaware training you can buy uh buy a seat on that course uh right off the website and we'll be that would be a hands-on. So we we actually have. I mean, we go through the eight-step methodology uh, with a case study. So we have a, a, a government of Canada kind of case study that I've I've built for different clients over the years, um, and uh, we'll get you hands-on with CBP and actually building models and understanding kind of some of the behind-the-scenes components of, of of what's involved in uh, in CBP. Um, hi, I, this is Deanna. I just had a quick question about, um, um, it's a good presentation. Um, just wondering if you've ever come across uh, where you had something that's a little bit more hard to uh, identify with, um, so oh. like yeah, downtime with equipment or... Um, that's you know, actually... To be honest, easier. My my background is manufacturing, so <laughs> I started doing this work uh, with a very similar tool uh, many years ago. And and manufacturing operations is you know classically where costing profitability. So and there there is I've I've been at this for almost 30 years now in in, in helping modeling. I mean this is new. CVP is new because we built it on the Qualaware platform. Uh, but methodology wise, we've been implementing this for almost 30 years. So there's, there's not very many business processes we've not come across and we've, we've never been stumped yet. 
but th but this is a very simple model. Um, some of the stuff that Mike has shown us, and you know, some of it was visible in those other uh, recordings. You know, mm -hmm. for the ferry service and Nova Scotia lending, quite complex, like hundreds of activities. And you know, here you only see a few connectors. Well, <laughs> yeah. on those models, <laughs> there's a lot. And if you if you had actually drawn those lines, you'd never be able to see the model. So yeah, yeah, connectors really uh, fill uh, fill a need. I think the uh, the challenge in the government is collaboration with the finance people and the strategic planning yep. people and the enterprise architecture people. Like, yep. it's hard for to to build an enterprise when you have silos. You know, and uh, be able to do scenarios, you absolutely need the collaboration from multiple frameworks within an organization to make this happen. You've hit the nail on the head, Carol. I mean, and that's why we called the product collaborative business planning intentionally yeah. because you need the finance people, your operations people, strategic planning people all sitting around the same table being able to do this kind of scenario planning. Hey, well, first of all, building consensus that this act you know realistically describes the business process and everybody gives a thumbs up that this is a, your kind of quote unquote digital twin of your business process and then really taking advantage of that to to run different uh, scenarios yeah absolutely yeah and and yeah, and, yeah go ahead no I'll just go ahead mike just finish your thought first no, no, I was just going to say, you know, quite often I, I think government's particularly bad that, you know, finance is, is uh, very isolated from operations. Uh, there, there's usually, you know, large walls. I mean, the budgeting process is a, is a classic example where that is a problem. Uh, this, and we use this for what's called activity-based budgeting too, because envisage you you've got all your demands here and now when you're doing your your next year's budget you can actually say well what am i expected to do from a volumetric output point of view and the costs will drive themselves basically you will you'll be able to develop your budget based on operations so um yeah we've 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 had good success at at, at bringing the finance people on board with operations using this kind of methodology I, I see a kind of scenario like this for um, reducing the technical debt, where you could really do some very nice uh, what ifs, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be a good uh, exercise to do in the government. And it's all about reusability, right? Which Qualaware, you know, facilitates. Yeah. Deanna, did you get your question answered? Um. The aspect I was interested in was, um, you know, you, t you talked about equipment and, and sort of the downtime of that. I guess that would be just another factor that you could add into this model. But you, yeah. you had a really nice layout of your model, but uh, it's just sort of the one other thing that's always hard to quantify, right? So yeah. here, if your phone system is down on a regular basis or your yeah. or any any part of your technology or equipment because i think yep. that <laughs> we run into this on a daily basis so it would be a factor i'd definitely uh yeah so what 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 you do is typically you would model an activity called you know downtime and you may have different types mm -hmm. of, of of sources of that downtime but what that is really doing is it's pulling time available time away from your equipment where it should be used in more productive uses and and the cost associated with that now flow. So you can actually get at the cost of downtime. And what you'll find is that that changes management's thinking on that. So people only say, oh, well, it's only 10% downtime. You know, that doesn't seem so bad. When you say that's a that's a million dollars you've left on the table because of that, uh, people sort of start to pay attention now. So bringing the financial lens into the equation changes kind of sometimes the priority and that's that's also why we see a benefit with lean because quite often lean initiatives don't have aren't, aren't well costed so we can mm -hmm. actually add that in and then help uh, clients prioritize which lean initiative they should be doing first to have the maximum impact on resource availability and on costs so and it changes Deanna, the whole conversation absolutely Deanna, on top on top of this 
or combined with this, actually what you might want to watch is the presentation that Gail Peterson gave about Fortig, which is all about engineering reliability, downtime, and you know managing all of that related activity at an operational level. So here you've got the planning side, plus you've got the operations level, you know, with, uh, with Fortig, mm -hmm. all running mm -hmm. on the Qualaware platform. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can do it all. We can do it all. Is that silver um, bullet thing, Michael? <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. Um, Walter, I see you have your hand raised. Did you have a question? Uh, well, I have a, I have more of a comment than a question because sure. Jump I in. am an expert in the call center field. This really is is very much appropriate for me. And in fact, one of the issues I've been struggling with is in fact how to do the what if scenarios that you showed us. And in fact, I could see the the possibilities even from from such a small. Uh, a small demonstration. So, because in reality, the you know we have about eight different variations of SIP channels. We have nine variations of cloud technology. We have about nine variations of call types, plus at least two levels of agents, plus the supervisors. So, yes, this is a great demo. I really appreciate it, but. I agree that a real scenario would be more complicated than this one. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we we Mike, Michael and I uh, we had to draw the line, right? Uh, and we're looking forward to getting back and making this kind of uh, more appropriate people like yourself, who who kind of have the in-depth call center knowledge. We just wanted to show some functionality, but. You're absolutely right. The different types of levels, the different types of training, all of those can be expanded. Um, and because you know, Qualaware provides that rich graphical user interface, uh, we can demystify some of that. And we can also take away the pain because typically these kinds of scenarios will be done in Excel. And oh, so you, you'll have very one painful. Yeah, extremely painful because then when you want to run a scenario to sort of say, oh, I want to add a new activity, you've got to go and manage, you know, 10, 20, 30 formulas that will ultimately break and you spend most of your time, you know, running back and, and trying to trying to sort out the, uh, the the spreadsheet model. Here, it's a matter of a quick, you know, drag, drop, associate, put that in, put your numbers in and the math takes care of itself. The algorithms are there to... Uh, to, to run that. There's no formulas that you have to really edit, right? Right. Thank yeah. you very much. Oh, pleasure. Thanks for the comments. Okay. Lots of food for thought. Any other questions, folks? Any other comments? Uh, as Kevin Wilson asked uh, a question. I don't know if he's still here. No. Nope. Uh, he's not. So I'm, uh, he had a question about, uh, Mike referred to uh, uh, the contracting vehicle that Mike mentioned. Uh, what he was talking about was, was the software licensing supply arrangement, the SLSA, we call it the SALSA. It's a procurement vehicle managed by uh, PSPC that allows us to sell uh, software to government. And CBP, this tool, is on the SALSA. So we have a government-wide contract for Qualaware, for architect licenses, and for collaboration licenses. CBP uh, would potentially use PLUS licenses or, uh, as well. Plus, there's the actual CBP software itself. To buy those, you would actually use the SALSA. So you would just do, uh, you know, a standard, uh, I think it's a 9200 requisition, and it gets processed uh, by your department either directly or if they go through uh, PSPC, but using the software licensing supply arrangement to buy the software. And the pricing has been negotiated and is set uh, on that supply arrangement. So anybody from government can uh, sign on to the salsa and look up close reach
collaborative CBP, collaborative business planning, and the cost of the software is there. Yeah. And, yeah. and the other the other option we have is what we call what we're calling the CBP cloud. So we've been working closely with Closereach and now have this available in a hosted subscription-based uh, licensing model. Um, so a lot of the clients that uh, want to uh, avoid some of the challenges of internal IT installation, ongoing support for on-premise uh, can take advantage of that as well. It was another, another benefit of the COVID hiatus for us. <laughs> <laughs> Great, okay. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, good discussion, everyone. I so much appreciate it.